Hey, what's up? It's Sean Wasabi, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Let's get it. You got an album dropping in about a week and a half, almost two weeks. Um, yeah, that's Dr. great. Like, dude, five years in the making. Like, your fans have been asking for this uh, debut totally. album. Like. You know, talk to me about Mango Tail and, and yeah. what um, what was going through your head when you started to kind of piece this album together? Because sonically, this album is so wild. I love it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm super excited. It's the project I've been wanting to put out like my whole time I've been producing music. So this is a huge moment for me. It's like my first cohesive um, project of sorts. Um, and it represents every single like like stage in my music career where I've had like different tastes and like evolved through like different um, styles and like different techniques and methods. So like, I'm super excited to like put this out. Um, dude, whoa, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, it's like hitting me more and more as like the release date comes sooner and sooner. Um, right? And I'm, I'm super proud of this. It's like, I like put my heart and soul into this and like made sure that this is gonna be like my I, like sort of identity like creative process endeavor thing um oh yeah it, it's like it's been making me emotional in a sort of way this past month and i've been like um just super like enamored by like um this this like point it's like i know it's like a weird time in like the world right now but um and it's taking me like moments to like process everything but I'm just super excited. It's like, um, and each song on the album is like, I, I've i made like a hundred or something songs in the process of making this project. And I've chose, I chose like my 12 favorite or like, um, I chose like the 12 of, of like this giant batch of songs to like represent what I want the project to be. And like what I want my first debut album to like um, put forth. But yeah, I like, whoa. I just <laughs> it's so huge it's just ah uh, i've been like it's been on my mind like non-stop i just um yeah i'm i'm super glad i like and i'm super proud of all the songs on the album like each song on the album was like my favorite song at one point um and i'm like dang <laughs> i've been i've been through like so many stages of like different styles and like getting into like pop music and getting into mashup culture and like getting into like MIDI controllerism and like getting into different, like I, I love doing different things and um, just like, um, it's been like uh, an emotional journey, an, an emotional journey and like also a really big learning experience over these past five years. And like, I've, I've like developed so much as like an artist and like as creative and like, as an individual. And I think Mango Tail totally represents that. And like, even like the visual aspect of Mango Tail, I like, I wanted it to feel like um, novelty in a sort of way. Like, um, I got two of my friends, Louie and Christina, who are some of my favorite animators in the world. And they work, they worked on this, on this, like on one of my favorite cartoons called We Bear Bears. And um, me and Louie Christina back in like 2017 or 2018 when I was like thinking about um what I wanted the album to like look like and what I wanted the album to like visually represent we sat in my living room and just like drew a bunch of um sketches and storyboards of like this island and like um like all the like what would the characters in this island be and like what would this universe of the music look like and like um and you can see that in the front cover is is like um, who, and that, this other artist, Anne, who's like super talented and she's amazing. She designed that. Um, she designed that front cover of the album using the storyboards and sketches we did in my living room back in like 2017. And I'm yeah, it's it's super crazy. I just well, but yeah, I'm I'm excited. Sorry, my bad. I just, no, dude, I I love how excited you are about this. Like you, you know, it, it's you put you put everything into this project and uh, you know, on top of that, you self-produced it. 
Um, so yeah. talk to me about like that process for you, because like you don't just get on your computer and look for sounds like you kind of recreate sounds yourself. You make sounds out of anything. So um, when creating this album, like what was one of the most creative ways that you made a specific sound for one of the tracks or for the entire album? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. That's a great question. I, I don't I haven't gotten that before, actually. Um, that sounds like a producer musician thing that someone would ask. <laughs> um, whoa, yeah, I'm, I went through a lot of sound design and a lot of like, um, like I've been paying attention to like how different timbres and like how different, like different instruments and like, like you could have the same chord and same melody, but so much of the timbre and like how, how it's like said and how it's all like, how like a sound is articulated. It, it changes the emotion a lot. And um, like, even if it's like an organ or like, like an organ would sound like super different from a marimba playing the same thing. Um, but yeah, I went through like different, I went through like so many different processes and like designing the sounds for this album. Um, I have this song called Tokyo T where I have this, this thing called a mono machine. It's like a, this like silver box and it's, it's called a mono machine sound generator and it just has a bunch, bunch of buttons and knobs where you can like press a button and turn a knob and it'll make like a really cool um, metallic like whoosh noise. And I, I just sat in my living room playing on that thing and recording what, I, what sounds I could get out of it. Um, and that's what made up a lot of the sound design on that song was just um, this, this sound generator like hardware thing like being like messed around with. Um, and then also, I, I really love a lot of organic sounding things. Like I'm super into synthesis, but I want everything that comes out, um, I like everything I print out and everything I lay down to sound like it's not a computer, but more like some sort of like character or emotion coming out or like, um, and that's why I sort of veer towards a lot of like um, bright and colorful timbres and like like marimbas and like kalimbas and like um keyboards and try to mess around with those just so they they sound familiar enough to be like um recognized like sort of recognizable but it's like it, the sound design is like there enough so that it feels unusual and like new and fresh um so i try to take careful process to, to like how my timbres sound in each and like how they layer as well, because like it's super important when you have, especially when you're producing pop music and you have like 100 layers and like, or like 50 layers, like you have like your chords and your bass and then you have like your kick drum and they're all like sitting on top of each other. And then you have like different things in like different frequency spectrum, like on the frequency spectrum, there's like different instruments and they all sit like, and like the vocal has to like slice through the middle of those instruments. Um, so I, I try to, even in the voicings, it's always like, um, like the the instruments have to be pitch shifted up and down to like get out of the way of the vocal. And I learned, yeah, like with pop music, that's that's like such a thing for like instrumental stuff. You can like get away with, um, like getting things to like fill up the whole spectrum and not having to worry about a vocal slicing through. Um, but yeah, I I'm trying to think of what other sounds I've like. I've sampled so many things and I just, the thing is like, I, I don't have, like I have, I have a microphone, but like my favorite microphone is like literally you get an iPhone and then you, you, you like record a video or you record a voice memo of something. And like the microphone on, on like your phone is on, on like phones are really good nowadays. It's like, um, like I can, if I like saw something in public and I was like, yo, that sounds really cool or like this, that sound on this sidewalk is amazing, but I don't have a microphone. My microphone's at home or in my studio or like I can't go back and grab my equipment and come back outside and record the thing I just heard. Um, so like I'll, I'll take out my phone, set it to like voice memos and just record that. And it sounds really good when you like import it into Ableton and like, and like do all the frequency masking and like, um, like multi-band compression to like get it to like sound more transparent. But yeah, I've, even like vocals, when I work with artists, sometimes I'll just get a voice memo of them and it'll sound good. Like it'll sound like, like pretty fire. Um, and I do that a lot for like a lot of my sounds and, and I, 
And also, oh wait, actually, hold up. So I just got a bass guitar and a guitar, like this, like my couch is right here. And I okay. just got, um, I, I'm borrowing some instruments. So like I didn't, um, like during this lockdown, there is like Guitar Center closed and like all the music, all like the music stores closed, like all of a sudden. So it was like, wait, I need guitars and bass guitar for like a lot of these songs. And I don't have, a, I don't have like instruments. So I hit up a bunch of my friends. Um, and like they let me borrow a bunch of these instruments. <laughs> like this guitar is, um, I, have, I have a friend who had like a, uh, um, a Gibson sponsorship and like Gibson just like let me borrow this Les Paul so I could like, like lay it down on lemons and like <laughs> whatever, wherever else I need a guitar. So it was, it was like quite a mission. Even like finding some of these sounds is just like, um, like I can't go to Guitar Center and get an instrument. Like time to hit up everyone and like see if I can borrow something. Because you're so particular about the way that your sound is and, you know, what you use for your sound, is that why you kind of decided to have an all-female, um, like, all-female features on this record? Because that was, like, the perfect kind of marinade with the sounds that you were kind of creating? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Oh, well, yeah, that's really good questions. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, I, man. I noticed that, too. Um, I, I do collaborations with everyone, but I think there's like a few factors that go into like why um, all my collaborations on this album are, um, are like female or like um, LGBTQ. I think people who have like more like femme personality types ha are like a lot more open with emotions and like, like a lot of the time when I work with dudes, it's always like, it's like, let's write a song about, let's write a song about picking up chicks at the club. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like I can always like sense where that's gonna go. I have some songwriters that I love working with all the time. Um, I have my friend Hollis, and she's like one of the main co-writers on this album. And she co-wrote like, um, she did Otter Pop with me, and she's like one of my best friends. Um, and we a lot when I first started writing pop music, um, she was like the first one to like teach me how to like write pop music and like how to do song structure and like. Like, how do you write lyrics? And, and it's just, like, she just described it to me as, like, you just take an object and you, and you find ways to talk about it without being too obvious. Like, you, like you describe, uh, like, an orange, and it's always, like, and you find, like, so many descriptive words. Um, and that's how we wrote, like, Otter Pop and, like, all these, like, food songs, like, Snack and, um, and like, Home Run. It's a lot of descriptive, like, songwriting and, like, a lot of sort of colorful and imaginative um and that's super fun because you kind of mentioned like your your songwriting especially with with hollis is very descriptive um do you have do you have the sounds in mind already when you're writing the material or do you write the material first and then kind of figure out what sound would kind of uh, blend properly with it when i do stuff for my album yeah when I do stuff for my album, I always think of the concept first. Like I have a I have a notes folder on my phone where it's just like different concepts and like different songwriting concepts. And that and when I write songs for my album, it always starts with that. Like even before the beat starts, it's always like, I want to write a song about Sesame Street. That hasn't happened yet, but this is just an example. Like I'll be like, I want to write a song about Sesame Street, and I'll write that down. And I'll start thinking of like ways. I'm like as a songwriter, I'm such a I'm such a hook person. Like I'm I'm good at writing things that are like hooks and I'm I'm good at writing things where like like just the way I sort of think about lyrics, it's always like everything has to be catchy for me and everything has to like be polarizing. Um and I know that I know like not all songwriters are like that, but that's that's sort of like the reason why I like when I write my stuff, it's always like I'll come up with a hook and then Hollis is like she'll do like the verses and like it happens like that a lot of the time. For Lemons, which is like the last song I put out, I um, I had music in my head that was playing like in my head the morning before I went to the studio. And it sounded like I was on a game show or like it sounded like I was the host of a sitcom or like, wait, no, I was the host of a game show and it sounded like sort of a sitcom from the 90s or like the 80s. So like when I was, like before we made Lemons, 
So I was like, there's this music in my head that sounds like, doo, 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 doo. and I was just, I was trying to like put that down and like, like going through sounds on my keyboard and like trying to figure out like the best way to get that down from my head onto like paper. Um, yeah. I like choose, I, I'm very particular about sound. So it's always like, uh, I think, cause I'm, I'm also like a very melodic person. I like thinking about melodies, but I feel like all my best melodies happen when I choose the sound first before writing the melody or like, cause it's, cause like I, I'll write like a hundred melodies if I like sit down at the key, at a keyboard, but it's like, they, like a lot of them sound good, but it's like, what's the, what's, what's the best articulation and timbre for this to like, um, so I take it to the next level, but yeah, yeah, I try to like do the sound design first before anything. I think it's interesting. I think that like it makes the melody speak or it, it makes like even like, yeah, even like coming from like more of a hyper melodic background, it's, it's sort of, I try to think like like on a musical level of like, it's not what you say, but how you say it. Delivery? Yeah, yeah like delivery. It's, yeah, cause like, um, yeah, like pop melodies, even, even when you do pop melodies, it's always like melodies that are sung versus melodies that are played on an instrument are somewhat, are, are somewhat composed differently. Or it's, it's like, when you're singing pop, you can get away with like not resolving melodies and like not like. Um, but if you have like a chord progression, it's always like the the chord has to like, especially in pop music, the the chords have to like resolve at some point, or like, um, whoa, like the melody of like the chord progression has to like, come back home, and like build tension and like. But it's it's done in a different way than like then say if like Max Martin writes like a, a pop melody, like, like imagine him like singing in a room versus like someone playing an instrument. And like, you can do jazz chords on like instruments and like, it's not like, it's not like you'll, you'll do jazz melodies without like jazz playing in the back, like jazz chords playing on top of that. Like I said, like this record, um, you know, a long time in the making, you can tell that you really, um, you really took your time to kind of create it and make it, sound the way that you really wanted to and at the same time kind of make yeah. it different it doesn't sound like anything else that's out there um mm. and you know nothing you. like not even sonically like it's like i feel like if you told me that you you invented new instruments for this record i'd believe you because that's what it feels like <laughs> thank you um but you know now that this record is about to drop um mm. on may 29th you know what yeah. else is what else is next for you like i know obviously like tours is not a thing um, right. And we're still on that social distancing situation, but you know, what else is next for, for uh, Sean Wasabi? Shoot. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm super excited for the album, but yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about that too. Um, I'm doing, I've been getting so many requests for doing like um, live streams, like going like live streams on TikTok, live streams on Instagram, Twitch. Um, like, cause there's so many, there's so many live streams going on right now because people are at home and also um, music festivals aren't a thing right now. So it's like promoters are taking these online, like um, like 88 Rising and Brownies and Lemonade and like all these, like com all these people that like used to throw parties and like in real life. So now they're taking it to like, um, they're taking it to like online and like online spaces and like pretty much <laughs> you live stream you like tune in on this Twitch stream and you get to hear like music from your, from the comfort of your living room and you're dan and like you dance in your living room and whatnot and like vibe with people online who are like also watching this. Um, so I think that's definitely a thing in the future, like for me as well. Um, I don't know. I know a lot of people are doing that. Um, and also, yeah, I've been, whoa. I've been doing a lot of interviews, but this is like, this is like my favorite one. I just like, I love it when people ask me cool questions and like questions that don't like, 
that's not necessarily the same thing that everyone else asks us. I, which I thank you so much. I appreciate it a lot. Um, whoa. I'm trying to think what else. Like I'm not, I'm not really going outside or anything. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen in the next few months after like right. even the album drops and like, um, besides like going online and like interacting. Hmm. Well, dude, like uh, I'm. I'd love to re- reconnect like and do an actual in-person, maybe in-studio interview with you once everything yeah. is like cleared to do this. Cause I like, you know, we're only, we only have so much time to do this here, but totally. like, I feel like there's so much more that you could talk about. That oh yeah. Like, obviously you're so excited about. <laughs> Absolutely. I like, yeah, there are so many things that I, I'd love to go into, but yeah, come like if like once everything's like lifted up, yeah, please come to my studio. Um, I'd love to talk more. Cool. I'll like, do that. There's so many things that I think about a lot of the time. It's like I don't go all. I don't like talk about it enough, or like I don't go. All, I don't go online enough and like spit out my words. It's not like I have a podcast where I talk about things <laughs> and like explain my process of making music and why song structure is important, or like why why this needs to be a song, but why isn't a, why isn't it a song already? Or like even talking yeah. about like personal things and like individual things. It's like or like community things or like politics or like, I don't know. Yeah, no, for sure. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely make it happen.